Hi all. This position here is a, an end game study, um, a composition made by Mr. Prokes, L. Prokes, in I believe 1948 or 49, something like that. I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, the the task here is why to play and win. So maybe you would like to try to find a solution before you hear my explanation. Um, so in that case, pause the video and try to find a way to win for white here. It's white to play and win. I'll continue my explanation in a few seconds. Okay. If we look at the position here, we see that, of course, this pawn on e6 is very important. If white can achieve to advance this pawn, he will win the game. Or maybe this way. Oh, I'm sorry, the last one. So that means that black has to prevent this pawn on e6 from promoting. Now let's have a look, just to get some insights in the position, what would happen is if white simply tries to win immediately by, for example, playing e7. Well, in that case, black plays bishop takes b3 check, and after the king has moved to d6, then he plays the bishop to a4 and he controls this promotion square on e8. Another way to try to win immediately would be to play e takes e7, but in that case it's even more simple. Bishop takes b3 check and after the king moves, then bishop takes f7 and white cannot win this. So that means that these direct ways of winning don't work. Now, how can we achieve a position uh, where we prevent that the black bishop makes use of these two diagonals, the a2 um, g8 diagonal and the a4 e8 diagonal? Because those are the more most important ways of defending for black. Maybe you would like to uh, try again to find the solution now after this first explanation and hence um, I'll continue my explanation giving the solution of the, the problem in a few seconds so if you want to try pause the video and otherwise just keep looking okay here's the solution to the problem so we have seen that it takes f7 and uh, e7 don't work. The solution is actually a very beautiful one because it combines two things. On one hand uh, the idea of promoting with this pawn and another idea is to uh, create a checkmate pattern against the black king. The first move is bishop a5 check. The idea behind this is that if the king takes this uh, this bishop then white can play e7 and if black tries to play bishop takes b3 check as we saw before then we play king to c5 and this is important king to c5 not to d6 to c5 why to c5 well because from here we control these three squares that means that if here the bishop moves to a4 the black king is totally trapped and the move b2, b4 gives checkmate. So we see that after bishop a5 check, king takes a5, e7, knight and bishop takes b3 check, king c5 is excellent because of this checkmate pattern. Now what if the sacrifice is not accepted? So if bishop goes to a5 check, what if black doesn't accept this, this sacrifice, for example, by playing uh, king to b5? Well, in that case, we see that the king on b5 is blocking the diagonal a4, e8. 
That means that white simply can play e7. And bishop takes b3 check doesn't help because of simply king to d4 for example. And bishop a4 doesn't work anymore because of this king on b5 that is standing in the way. So the theme in this composition is actually um, blockading the diagonals. That's what it's all about. It's about blockading the diagonals and about combining a mating pattern and the threats of promoting promoting with the, the white pawn. Okay, I hope you liked this um, this endgame composition and um, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.